Sam Hubbard, the Cincinnati kid, the 20, he will score! Nice. And we are still alive and yeah. breathing. Yeah. Barely. Yeah. Barely, yeah. Yes. Yes. It's touch and go there for a while. Yeah, but here we are. Go. Yeah, here we are. HR, I didn't know touch and go was something you can do. Yeah, I thought we weren't allowed to touch. Well, we are allowed said. to touch things like pens and okay. or laptops. And you grab them and you just take them home. You go. Well, so, there's a pen on Daddy's desk that no one wants to touch, but that's a different story. Yeah, well, here's the thing. John and Bridget, you were at the game. You were there for the Sam Hubbard 100 yard, 150 yard, I don't know, very long fumble reco- recovery. Felt like a mile. Touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> It's about how, like, how he looked at the end of that was how I would look at the end of that. Like, that's a yeah. 100-yard dash is no joke. No. He, yeah. he looked like if Daddy would try to run 10 yards. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's been training. So here's the thing. As Andrew Seiler said, the Ravens did. They pulled it off. They pulled it off. We saw well, let's, let's of remind the, the viewer yeah. that Daddy's interpretation of pulling it off is that they would pull off the tape of a broken vase and then all the pieces would come off. They, they were basically taped together. And basically right. what would happen is when you pull the tape off, things would fall apart. That's actually not what happened. I would say that what happened was if the Ravens had one more quarter, they would have won that game. Let's be honest. No, no, I don't think yeah, so. I do. But the no, Ravens, I, I, listen, listen, there are so many Bengals games where I've walked away saying, wow, that was close, but the Bengals were the way better team. And there were so many Bengals games that we lost, and I was like, well, we lost, but the Bengals were the better yeah. team. Well, let, let's let be just, honest. Let, let, let let's just, be honest. The Ravens yeah. were the stronger offense and even, in some ways, defense okay. that game. I mean, we well, got, we got saved by a fumble. Defense. We got saved by a fumble. Yes. Let me just say something. So about a year, a year and 10 days ago, could you imagine us sitting here and complaining after Cincinnati Bengals' postseason victory? Yes. I could not. I, it's in, in any, my contract. Any I'm way, supposed to complain all the time. Any possible way that we won the game, we would have been happy. And now these Cincinnati Bengals, obviously they were at the Super Bowl last year. Yeah. And not only that, but everybody on the show knew that they were not a fluke. They were the opposite. They were just hitting their stride when they made the Super Bowl. Very young team, you know, drafting well, adding the right free agents, and they have a superstar quarterback. So we all expected them to be back. But look... The Ravens, as a number of people said, have a top what, John? Top three, top five defense of the league. They know us very well. They were very angry. It's a defense sur- designed and, around our uh, offense. Yeah, really. and, and let me say something, John. Tyler Huntley, his, his, statistically speaking, he played better than Lamar Jackson ever did in a playoff game. That man did what he needed to do. He, he enabled the run game to work. He He's made some big plays of his own. He's also speedy. Yeah. At one point, yeah. he was at the top of the speed chart for right. the game. He got, it was almost 20 miles an hour. Maybe yeah. it was, but Like John was saying, it was, it's, like, it's like when I run 10 yards, it was like, yeah. John, go ahead. So what are your observations of this game? Are you heartened? Are you disheartened? And why, no, just, why do you look incognito, John? No, I'm just violently, violently hungover after last night, after the conclusion wow. of the night. Ended up in a bathroom at a bar. Next thing you know, I walk out and Zach Taylor has got a football and he's throwing it at bartenders. He's hitting them in the head. No, nah, it was okay. Um, it was a great, it was a great time after the game. And now I'm talking. Wait, to did puppets. you really party with Zach? 
I, I did, yeah. Like he was, we were out on the dance floor. He was surrounded by some people I didn't know, but you know, I was surrounded by people I didn't know. We kind of locked eyes for a little bit, wow. and that was the last thing I remember. But I'm, I'm, I'm here, and I want to say yeah. to J.K. Dobbins, to Marcus Peters, to Roquan Smith, the enablers of this losing ass culture that the Ravens have right now. It's despicable. It makes this rivalry not fun. It makes the Ravens not fun to root against because these guys are just losers. They yeah. reek of just losing and the complaining and throwing Tyler Huntley under the bus after a pretty damn good game from a backup quarterback who's battling shoulder tendonitis. Tyler Huntley kept the Ravens in this game and J.K. Dobbins just threw him under the bus saying if we had Lamar, we would have won. But no one knows that. No. no one knows if Lamar wouldn't have fumbled at the goal line. Roquan no. Smith and saying that we were the better team Team. The better team doesn't fumble the ball at the one and give up no. a 99 yard touchdown return. Marcus Peters punching Joe Mixon in the gut after sitting on Jamar Chase's no. face. Yeah, enough of right. these guys. Enough. Oh, I yeah. like hungover John. I like hungover John. Yeah. Yeah. Because hungover is not drunk, so it's okay to come to work hungover. There you go, HR. There you go, HR. We should put that yeah. in the policy. I'll we'll change the so, rules mid season for so, it. So, John, I, I'm with what, you. Yeah. I'm with you. But would you also go so far as to say, and I would say this, that I don't think Lamar would have won this game? No. I don't think that was I the think issue. There's no way. Not and, after and, yeah. missing five weeks and not practicing, he would have not just that, shelled John. himself. John, he has been very inaccurate in yeah. his postseason games. John, and he's John, had easier yeah. matchups than this Bengals team in some of those yeah. games. Let's be honest, until I think it was last year when he won his first postseason game, or was it the year before, he was bad. He was like Andy Dalton bad at, at times. He was very bad. You know, you guys, uh, yeah. I'm going to take a lot of crap. I'm going to take a lot of crap from our viewers. I'm going to take a lot of crap from you guys, but I don't care. I'm going to say that the difference between the Bengals and the other teams they're playing consistently comes down to the coaching. It's the mistakes they're not making. It's the punching the ball out, getting those fumbles, forced fumbles, that Lou and Romas taught those guys. Burrow's good, but Burrow isn't the reason we won the game. We won the game because of excellent coaching. And this team hung in there. They had a, they've had major injuries on the offensive line, but they're able to weather that storm because of really both sides of the ball coaching so beautifully yeah. and special teams. I, well, if I would you, say you compare this. It, I mean, like, for example, that fumble, that forced fumble was also a mistake in the play calling. They, they call this right. quarterback sneak with all the guys. As Chris Collins was yeah, saying. Yeah, you have this. him jumping over the top and yeah. you have his guys pushing dumb. him. Yeah, It was dumb. John, so you mentioned you saw Zach Taylor there, which seems to mean they don't card at the place that you go to. No. But one thing I want to say to Oji's point is I've noticed Zach Taylor maturing, as you said, as is this position and... And uh, even in the face, have you noticed he's gotten a little chubbier in the face even? And I did some research, and what happens is a lot of newborns, they lose weight the first few weeks of their lives. Yeah. And then, and then they start getting it back, and that's when they get chubby and all cute and all that. And so, Well, yeah, and he also, if you notice, yeah, he, when, they, at, when they're born, they have that little embryo hair. But his hair is kind yeah. of getting thicker and fuller. Exactly. The way the baby's so he Well, Zach Taylor's yeah. making the case, yeah, that he's making the case that um, infants and babies are more mature than grown men because he's way more mature than John Harbaugh. That's another thing. Oh. Screw yeah. John Harbaugh. Yeah. Screw John Harbaugh. Yeah. Enough you of him. Know, enough. You know, you know what I was thinking about oh, John Harbaugh? He's the I was like, worst. Can you imagine? It's a good thing that guy's marriage. Can, uh, married. Can you imagine trying to be a matchmaker and getting anyone to go out with John Harbaugh? Did you see that? Can you imagine how torturous the that line, would be? The, the, the interview with yes. the sideline reporter. That was so disrespectful. It's very rude. It's very rude. He was so disrespectful. Yeah. I tweeted something about that earlier. Like, I think true character is shown in On how you exhibit grace regardless yeah. of circumstance. That dude gets a zero out of 10. He true. sucks. True. But These can I say something? Can I be devil's advocate here? I, I agree he's a. I'm trying a douche. Is that okay? Say douche. That's okay, right? Uh, I agree. He's a, he's, a, he's a douchebag. But that being said, he's a damn good coach. I mean, he he got that team to outperform themselves on in that game. They looked a lot better than they should have, and he did a great job. And the other thing is, I think sometimes the douchiest coaches are the best coaches. Yeah. And lastly, I think that his had brother, it been his brother was yeah. Yeah, I think it had, had it been uh, this mean, grumpy Harbaugh out there in the Bills game, I'm not saying that we made the mistake, we did the right thing, but I do think he would have stuck to his guns a little bit with the NFL more yeah. and maybe done something well, like this, so that we didn't a have a... That's segue. I, I, I just want to say yeah. one thing, Hoji. Why are we acting like the, the Raven... John's already noted they have trash 
personalities. Like they are just, there are a lot of those players who are just dirty and awful. They don't know how to handle losing. But let's not pretend that there's not talent uh, on that team. You've got Dobbins, you've got Andrews. I always say Andrews and Kelsey are two of the best tight ends in the league. Dobbins is an excellent running back. You've got a top three defense and you've got maybe one of the best kickers in the history of the NFL. The Ravens are not void of talent. And so when Smith is like, "Eh, the better team didn't win. The better team got more points, forced more turnovers, and that's the team that won. Right. End but of John, the day, John. pen, mic, dropped. I, I agree John, with that. This, yeah. Let us talk about the, the estate of the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay. Because, right. yeah. Wait, did because you say John or Hoji? John. Okay. Right. And John isn't me or John isn't Hoji? Yeah. yeah. John. <laughs> let, let us go to Bridget. Present. Okay. I, I, I'm going to cede my time to John. <laughs> okay, John. Look, here's what I want to know, John. So it looks like Isaiah Prince is going to be one of the starting tackles. They're not going to stick with Jackson and Carmen. That's what they're saying. And why? Let, let's just do a review. Jonah Williams, he... Wait, he did someone actually say that? Because I was, I was looking yeah, for that. Because that doesn't sound true. No, but like I, I, haven't, like, I believe you. I just didn't see that. Yeah. You, you got you to you catch up. Yes, it's look, not an answer. We ju- Carmen, looked, Carmen looked good. That's the thing. That's why I'm surprised to hear that. Carmen gave up a couple of really bad pa- pass uh, pressures. Yeah, but he looked but, good doing it. I mean, he looked yeah, yeah, oh, good no, while he, he was doing hair, it. Yeah, yeah he's attractive. Hair, yeah. He's, yeah, big chest. Look, John, we have, you know, we have an energy on the right side. He's been doing yeah. pretty okay. So they probably... Not really. No, he hasn't. I'm going by John's face now. He has not been doing pretty okay. No. He's been doing pretty so, crappy. But here's the thing. Does he make more sense on the left side? Do you no. do, or do you do you mix things up? Maybe put an energy on the left side because he's considered let's say higher on the depth chart and maybe try it to Isaiah Prince on the right side, which I think he was there last Super Bowl run, right? He was. So what what do you do if you're the Cincinnati Bengals? And also what is Jonah Williams unbuckling his knee again, as they said, and dislocating it again, and not being able to find it again? What does that look like for him? It looks insane because he's a 25, 26 year old human being who's dislocated two knees in a two month span. And he's been able to play football despite dislocating one. Not every knee dislocation is the same. He was able to pop his knee back into place back in week five against this same Baltimore Ravens team, but this dislocation was a little bit worse. He's going to miss time because of it. Now the Bengals are kind of right back to where they started this time last year, only it was just a different you know, avenue, right? Their, their offensive line was never good to begin with in 2021. Their offensive line was was finding its stride towards the end of the season. It's all kind of falling apart now down to three reserve linemen. I don't think they keep Jackson Carmen left tackle. He's been practicing in all five spots because that's what you do as a backup, and he would just happen to be one of the few active you know, reserves in this game. But Isaiah Prince, like you said, he's on the practice squad and, he, and he's a natural tackle. They moved Jackson Carmen basically to guard at this point in his career and he just kind of came in to tackle as a pinch. So I don't think they move it to energy to, to left tackle just because he's gotten those practice reps at right tackle where if presumably Isaiah Prince is practicing on both sides. That would be my guess, but it wouldn't, I guess, shock me if Akeem Adenji was at left tackle because that's where he was at Kansas. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking. I guess but we ain't in Kansas hmm. anymore, John. And Agenergy, I mean, I think the reason for Joe Burrow and, and the Cincinnati Bengals subpar performance and only subpar relative to themselves. I mean, they, they're fine. They're playoff material. They're great, but they're not what they can be, I think, was mainly because of weakness in the offensive line. Couldn't get the running game going. Uh, Joe Burrow, he had to do what many of us did in the late 90s, which is make some bad decisions or throw it away, which is also what we did in the 90s. But... My question really is, John, why does everybody act like it's so far-fetched and such a crazy thing to do for us to, hey, you just pick up the phone and, you know, it's late at night, you're, you're eating nacho chips, and you're like, hey, Whitworth, uh, I was thinking about you, and I was wondering if we could, you know, hook up again and bring you back on the team. Why not? Because he's 41 and hasn't practiced, like, Again, like what are what are we doing? I'm is he okay with getting, that. Is in he his own in shape. In I'm his okay own with that. words today, he said he has giraffe legs. 
He's yeah, Whitworth but, said his heart and head say yes, but his giraffe legs say no. So I okay. Again, well, let's let's just use the heart and head, and I'm okay yeah. with that. I mean, yeah. let me ask you this. No, no, no. Flat out. I mean, flat my out. heart no, and head out. say I should John, go be on the offensive say, line, no, no, and no, I think I, my a real legs question. say a sports say real hold on, Daddy. Actually. Hold on, hold on. Follow up question. Real question. Uh, Whitworth with draft legs. Isn't he all? Isn't he still better than Adenogy? No offense, Adenogy. I love you. I think you're great, but I don't think you should play in the NFL. I, I'm wondering if he should be, if if Whitworth with the draft legs is better than Adenogy. Let me that's just, a take. Yeah, that's a take. John, let me ask you something, okay? Is it is it a good take or a bad take? Well, I don't think we really know because I think with Whitworth, John, correct me if I'm wrong. I guess Bridget, even Bridget can correct me. I think that with a guy like Whitworth, with that kind of talent, with that kind of what age, has happened here? I think that that's the fifty fifty chance. I'm getting the silent treatment. Uh, yeah, I think there's a fifty fifty. Are chance. you guys thinking through my question? <laughs> Am I? Can you hear me? So they're not going to call Whitworth. That's yes, we we can hear you. Okay, I say there's a fifty fifty chance that he comes back and he's serviceable for what? Two, three games. They don't need him that long. He's not going to be serviceable. He's going to be terrible. He's 41 really? years old and he hasn't... Pr what, what, what are we expecting here? He's just going to be in because football John, shape? I read the article, I read the article yeah. where he said, I was blessed. Can we, with can, can we just stop? Can we stop with this? He's not coming back. I don't I care mean, how many tackles get hurt. He's not coming back. I liked John. Pete Schrager's text today. So, John, well, I was not violently hungover, but slightly hungover. I feel like I just sat on Twitter all day other than when I was doing my laundry. So most of my takes today are going to come from other people's Twitter feeds or Twitter account, whatever people, whatever Twitter comes from. Pete Schrager was like, okay, not wit. Like, let's go on to Munoz. And I think, like, that's the joke, right? Like... We don't. We gotta stop living in the past. We either have to work with yeah. what we've got, or if there's a possibility to sign somebody else. But like, the Whitworth so John, chapter, I think, is closed. John, here's a question that we get from Matthew Grundy, and he paid for it, which means we have to answer it. He's saying, is our O line better or the same or worse than 2022? And John, here's the thing: we obviously we lost Alex Kappa for a while. We have lost Johnny Williams. We lost Lyle Collins a while ago. That's I hear three. clicks. I see Matthew Grundy asking a question. Is our O-line better than... Better <laughs> what is than happening? Same? Can, can you Hoji, not hear... Can Hoji hear us? Hoji, not. can you hear us? Yes. I guess can you hear me? You just can't hear me. Yeah. So let me... Let me Daddy-o has Daddy yeah. been addressing this. Very okay, so envious look. of that. So, so look, John, here's the thing. He's, he's asking if it's better or worse than 2022 it's probably the same I, I don't think so i don't think so because i i see a few pass plays here and there with the protection holds up and i didn't see many of those last year i saw the big plays from burrow in the postseason coming with him on the run him rolling out but let me just say this john the run blocking even before alex kappa got injured took a dive right right john so i mean against the ravens of the wild card we had 51 Oh my God! Yards on eighteen carries. This, That's two points. Uh, we, we we can't do this for twenty more minutes, man. You got to unplug the mic. The static's okay. really bad. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, right. to, to, answer, to answer your question, I, I feel like the offensive line is about at the same level of talent as it was last year. Burrow's just better now at avoiding sacks and getting the ball out, or just evading pressure. He's not taking as many sacks, and that's partly because of him, right? Stats are, or sacks are more of a quarterback stat than they are offensive line. If, if the offensive line gives up four or five sacks, it can't be like, oh, the offensive line is going to trash again. There's, there's context within those sacks. But now you, like, you're in a, you have a tackle situation that's pretty much worse than it was last year. Like Jonah Williams gets a lot of crap, but he's still a pretty decent tackle that holds up for most of the games. His bad reps do lead to some really bad allowed pressures and everything, but that that's like that's going to happen against elite pass rushers. The interior is probably better. Like Quinn Spain did not finish the year strong last year. Cordell Volson is playing pretty well. Ted Karras is fine. He's about the same as Trey Hopkins was at this time last year. But, I mean, Ted Karras is a really good player too. And there's still some left to be seen about Max Sharping and how he can hold up for the course of a postseason run. So I think the interior is fine, but the tackle situation is pretty dire at this point. Okay, so can you hear me okay now? Or is this yeah. still bad? That's better, okay. yeah. 
John, I was going to say, even before Alex Kappa went down, right, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it was 53 yards on 21 carries. Against the Patriots, 73 yards on 24 carries. And then I think he went down Baltimore week 18. That was 55 yards on 20 carries. And then this game, 51 yards on 20, on 18 carries. So the, the run defense has been bad for about four or five weeks now. Run, run the blocking. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the Alex Kappa thing. And we know Lyle Collins wasn't a huge factor in that area. So what's going on? Is there any chance we see them figure something out in the run game? Because if we can't run against these teams, let's be honest, it's going to be a lot of Joe Burrow having to play hero ball again. I mean, that's what the postseason is, right? It's quarterbacks just putting the team on their back and just shouldering these wins. Like, that's why you're going to pay Joe Burrow $50 billion quadrillion dollars this offseason. So I think they're fine with living with that. Again, like, it comes down to are those bad pressures going to lead to sacks? Are they going to lead to holding calls? Are they, are they going to lead to drive-killing plays? Or can the Bengals still maintain some sense of being in front of the chains and not having those drive-killing plays and, and still at the very least ending up with decent or punting away like good field position instead of just you know giving the ball back too early because that is what's going to end up not giving them enough points to beat teams like the Bills and the Chiefs. So let's talk about the Bills, not the Chiefs yet. Let's talk about the Bills, John. So the first game, since I had Bengals come out out fire, right? They're ahead. They're about to win the game. Terrible injury happens. The coach says, I need to go. You know, I need to be at the hospital. Then he just goes back to his home in Buffalo, and the, he can't be found. He doesn't answer his calls. And a little bit later, we find out that the Cincinnati Bengals have forfeited, forfeited the game. It counted as a loss for the Cincinnati Bengals. Very odd situation. Some of those now things they get, are factually inaccurate, right, but sort of right. lead to the same result. The same result, yes. And so now we are in a situation where they're going to play these guys in Buffalo. It's a very cold place. They are a very savage people who, who like to jump on tables, John. And then they, they eat, they, all they eat is wings. Very yeah. crazy place. They have to go there and face this team and they have to face this moose of a quarterback, as you call him, John. Yeah, he's this 280 man. pound quarterback who turns the ball over half the time and throws touchdowns half the other time. Yeah, he's a pretty so, wild guy. Well, and, the okay. only, and the way you beat him, uh, the way I think you beat a quarterback like that is through the secondary. Because if you can close off that those downfield crazy long passes, then he ends up failing. And, and yeah. secondary is not our strength. He also well, weighs 240, not 280. Yeah, he weighed 240 and I, I just wonder, a, not too long ago. I wonder, is Eli Apple to completely healthy too? And, and but it, even if he is, we need Eli, Eli Apple... He has hot and cold games, John. Well, still, so, I, I mean, mean, he has these. He has these. It's like it's like he seems to be a solid corner, eighty percent of the time, in most games. And then every few games, he has one of those times where he just gets completely toasted. Like last night. Like last night, the worst you know possible time. So you really don't know what you're getting with Eli Apple, and Cam Taylor Britt. Do you know what his injury is, John? I do not. I, I think it's growing. Injury. Yeah, I was going to say, when Daddy asks what an injury is, it's growing. He was it's on the injury growing. report last week. but like Daddy was um, really into practice. groin injuries. He doesn't quite know what the groin is. He's obsessed with groins. We had a I'm whole not show where we talked about yeah. what the right. I know. I know. He doesn't no, know what I'm the groin saying, is, and he, he would I've, ask. He continue. No, I know. Do you know what it is? I've just okay, said, I just don't <laughs> understand why players are not it's take, like, using protection. It's like when a seven-year-old when a seven-year-old walks into Victoria's Secret and starts asking a lot of questions because to the seven-year-old, it's already still a secret. So I want to talk about... John, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, the analysis for this game is the same as it was leading up to the Monday night game that ended up not being played. Josh Allen will give and he will take from you, right? He will unload these 60-yard bombs over the heads of everyone on defense like he did against Miami, and he will also run with the ball carelessly that a team like the Bengals defense who loves prying at the ball to finish those plays, like he will give them opportunities to turn the ball over, right? He will throw yeah. into double coverage. He will miss a defender here and there. And the Dolphins, that, that's how they could have beaten the Bills. And now you have the, a Bills team who, yeah, they finished the season on a win streak, but they didn't look very good doing so. Like they didn't look 
tremendously great against the Bengals. They needed two kickoff returns for touchdowns to beat the Patriots. And this game, they almost blew it to Skylar Thompson at home. So yeah. the Bills are coming into this game not playing their best, just like the Bengals are kind of still finding themselves. It's two teams that are, are way more talented than what they've put on, on display in the past couple of weeks. But I don't know. It's a whole new ball game now. Well, I'll tell you my concern, and I'm going to be frank with our viewers because I, I made that promise to you so many moons ago, which is that if you re- recall when we lost the Super Bowl, it was a very sad day. There was a there was a kind of look to the way those plays would go against the Rams, and it's in our worst games. This is how it goes: it's one, two, three punt, right? And it's Joe Burrow can't get nothing done because the, the O line is not giving him any time. And I'm sorry to say that I saw that face of the Cincinnati Bengals again last night against the Rams, uh, the Ravens. And I'm worried. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not too worried uh, yeah. because it's fine. Uh, our team tends to have a, a tendency to, to persevere, and that's great. But I'm worried. I'm concerned. I think we I, all I'll should be, be honest. Concerned. I'm not. I'm not as much worried. I think the reason that Joe Burrow didn't get in the groove wasn't the ripping it downfield was because the Ravens are very physical and they have a couple of corners, they have a couple of defensive backs who know how to intimidate, they know our our players. And he said something, John, he said something like, I can't wait to get back to, you know, playing quarterback or something against the Bills, as if to imply that- That was Jesse Bates. Was it? Okay, doesn't matter. Jesse Bates, so, one of, to, Jesse to, to Bates isn't going to be playing quarterback. What, is he okay? Which, yeah. by the way, like Burrow played fine in this game. Like he, he did. Was yeah, he was okay. Like, he the, did. The, there was, but he there didn't get those big plays. He was half. okay. There's I no mean, big well, well, no, well, no, I feel like we're forgetting the fact that Jamar Chase had a false start at midfield, right? It was third and four, moved it back yeah. to third and nine. Three yeah. straight completions of at least 15 yards, two of them yeah. to Jamar Chase who created separation, and right. Hayden Hurst was like an inch away from scoring a touchdown against the Ravens, yes. which would, would have been fantastic. So there were opportunities yeah. to push the ball down no, the field. No, what I'm saying is he didn't have any of those 30-yard down the field throws, and well, no. I think he will have plenty of those against I just, Buffalo. I think, I think it's going to happen. I, no, yeah, I, John, I, I don't. don't think that's a result of Joe Burrow not playing well. I mean, that's the defense that's that the I'm Ravens saying. were. Yeah, that's the defense the Ravens were running. I think yeah. we knew that. We knew both teams were probably going to try and keep it on the ground some more. Uh, Buffalo doesn't scare me. I Frankly, this Ravens team scared me a little bit more, not just – not because of like talent or and like I said they are they are a talented team but they were coming out playing like house money they were yeah, just were playing, playing for their yeah. lives Look, th- right. there's time there's times when Joe Burrow is Joseph Burrow there's times when he's Joey Burrow and there's times when he's Joe Burrow and I will say that the, the first drive of the second half he was Joe Burrow top form but there were times when he looked like Joseph Burrow and. That what is that? What is too Joseph Burrow? Too, oh, con- okay. too conservative. Like throwing the ball away, not getting the ball where it should go. And, and it wasn't his fault. It was the lack of time that the offensive line was giving to him, really. I think that was the big problem. It was the death of the running game. It's such an easy correspondence. When, when Joe Mixon can get him four or five yards a run, a carry maybe, well, let us all not of a sudden things on Joe great. Mixon. And when he can't, this is, well, that's as it. We said, as we said, OG, so so is, is is Joe Mixon Joseph Mixon right now? Is, is he yeah. too conservative? No, no, no. Running backs never play too conservative. What happens is John they become Joe Mixon senior, for instance. Yeah. Running yeah. backs get old and they the don't third, have the, worst, the fourth, right? the fifth, right? And then they become Esquire, and they got rid of him. So look, yeah, I mean Mixon, Mixon's just I feel like. But who are we just talking? We were talking about Eli Apple and how he's like eighty percent. I kind of feel that way about Mixon. I don't and think this is a running back thing. I think it's, I think it's offensive line, line thing. Yeah, 100%. I, th- I think it is really, really simple to say it's an O-line thing, it's a running back thing. I think it's a mix of both. Like, two things can be true, and in this case, I feel like Mixon's not finding quite as many holes, and he's not shedding quite as many tackles. He is still good. Like, but we can see that he is making great plays. I mean, he enables Joe to get some great check downs that do indeed move the ball down the field. But I, I, I think you can't just say it's Mixon. No one said that. I've occasionally said it in the, well, the heat good. of the game. But I don't think it's just the O line either. Well, I think the O line, like I told John, the O line has been off for about yeah. a month, month and a half. Well, they've been hurt. No, but even before they lost Kappa. 
they were they were struggling. But before and they lost Kappa, they lost John. Lyle Collins. Lyle Collins, good job. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you guys told me that last week. But okay, let us get to our predictions because we're deep enough into the show that we can do that. So let us start with Bridget, the HR, Jan Cars. Hmm. It's going so it's going to be close. I am not at all afraid to go into Buffalo. I'm not afraid of Buffalo. I think it might be an emotional game, just kind of picking up where they left off, being back with those guys. Could see us be a little bit uh, at the beginning and then settle down really quickly. Um, it's going to be close, I think. Uh, so I, if I'm using the what we started in the first nine minutes of the Monday night game a couple weeks ago. I think we'll be able to put points on the board. I don't worry about that. I am going to say Bengals 28 Bills 27. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like a go ahead touchdown at the end or something. Yeah. I don't actually know how these scores happen. They just, the spirit moves Wait. me, and that's what I say. I liked it. Yeah. Okay. It's close to what I was going to say. Let's go, John. Or Hoji. John. Let's go, John. John. I think I agree with Bridget's uh, sentiments there. I think the Bills' defense, while still very talented, um, doesn't have the familiarity that the Ravens' defense does. They play a different brand of defense a little bit, and the Bengals had a decent plan for them. A couple weeks ago, and I feel like this is a defense that the Bengals can push the ball down the field, much like the Bills can push the ball down the field against any defense that they play. And we, we will see explosive plays probably from the likes of Stefan Diggs or Gabe Davis. Josh Allen, is just, that's just who he is, right? He's going to start the game pretty good, and then he will do what Josh Allen does, and he'll probably make a couple of mistakes. And the Bengals defense has this this earned reputation of just capitalizing off of mistakes. They, they don't let turnovers slip through their hands anymore. Every single time they're in a playoff game, they make some type of clutch play that really sways the game. And I feel like that might just be the difference in this one. I, I think my biggest concern would be going to Buffalo with the silent count, with three backup offensive linemen. The communication is going to be absolutely key. We don't know who's starting at left tackle. They have to figure this all out. The protection will be an issue. Greg Rousseau, Shaq Lawson, really good pass rushers off the edge. Ed Oliver stunting out the middle. It's going to be rough. Like Burrow's going to get sacked multiple times. We're going to have the same conversation about the offensive line next week if they if they do win and move on. And I'm not really looking forward to that, but it's just what it's going to be. So I think the Bengals, because of their turnover um, – awareness and and just being able to capitalize off those i feel like that will probably give them the edge despite all the odds so i'm gonna go Bengals 24 bills 28 wow 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 yeah beautiful 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 that was touching touching Hoji. okay well back on village island we used to have a saying and that saying was my my heart is coming out of my throat and what it means is that you're so stressed out and your heart's beating so fast and you're so worried about something that it feels like your heart is coming out of your throat. Bengals fans, get ready. Mm, this game that's coming up for you, your hearts will be coming out of your throats. It's going to be a nail biter. It's going to be a crunch timer. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of back and forth and surprises because really these two teams are very evenly matched. Let's be honest. You've seen the Bills play the Chiefs. You've seen us play the Chiefs. It looks a lot similar in terms of scores and, and difficulty. You've seen the Bills you know, play the Dolphins. You've seen us play the Dolphins, and so on and so forth. And in fact, in the 10 minutes or whatever that we saw of the Bills-Bengals game, yes, the Bengals were ahead. It didn't look great. The, when the Bills wanted to rush down the field, they did. And we made it down too. And so I think it's going to be a really close game, the way, you, the way Bridget, you called it, and, and John seems like you are too. I think it's going to be won by a field goal. I'm going 34-31 Bengals, but I don't. Th I, I think it's going to be overtime, and I think it's going to be a tough one, and I think we're all going to come out of it stronger and better off than we've ever been before. Wow. The player of the game, Evan McPherson, I'm giving you one last chance. You will be the player of the game should you live up to it. No more missed points, buddy, or I'm going to stop calling you out on the show. Okay. 
Well, three for the Bengals. So let me explain my thinking. I look at this Bills team, and I see they struggled against the Dolphins and inferior opponents, similar to how the Bengals struggled against the Ravens. The difference is the Bills are down a pass rusher, but they mostly have their primary pieces in place. The Bengals are without Chidobe Awuzie. Yeah. They might be without Cam Taylor Britt. Yeah. Eli Apple had a, a small injury, came back, but had a bad game. Yeah. And you have this guy who's going to, he is going to launch it downfield throughout the game. So yeah. at least two of those are going to be completed. The most. question is, can the Bengals get a few big plays of their own? And with this instability on the offensive line, with that crazy Buffalo crowd, right? And with that, that the cold air and all that kind of stuff, can they keep their focus and exceed expectations? And I don't really expect much from the running game. We haven't seen it for a while. So having said all that, I think the Bengals are going to look a little bit sharper than they did against the Ravens because they feel like this is an offensive game. They're going to look a little more aggressive, maybe have a few more beautiful highlights. But sadly, I think that ultimately the Buffalo Bills will be victorious. They will be the victors of this game. That is horrible. But I, I appreciate your, earnestly, your earnestness, yeah. your honesty. And the final, score, the final score will be 38 to 31 Cincinnati. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let's bring the horses back now. Because yeah. you, you said, now this time, see, I, I'm not falling for your crap. You, okay. said, you said that the Bills would be the right. victors. They would be victorious. Now, there's no yes. double meaning to victor or victorious. They I can't wait to see who it is named Victor that plays a role in this. Am I, do I need to explain my prediction further? Please. If you would. Okay. So you this see, is my it's MLK Day, and this is my opportunity, equity, justice, and freedom hat. So that's why this hat got picked out today, Crib Keeper. And it is the only day where the Underground Railroad Museum is free to attend. That's how I remember this day, free. Wow, you've just turned so, social justice and civil rights into something cheap. But go ahead. Yes, the promo wasn't my idea. But here's the thing: support your local art. Listen, here's the thing. So when you read about French intellectuals from the 19th century. Okay. Right? Which you have done. <laughs> Which I have done. Okay. And he found two pages of it in the gutter on a walk home. Yeah. You come across a very interesting man. And so this is a man who has spent his life, right, who he, he was essentially opposing dictatorships, opposing Louis Napoleon. And he wrote about a lot of injustices in the world. But then when they overthrew Napoleon, he said, and I quote, he said, Dictat dictatorship is a crime and it's a crime that I am going to commit. He intended on being the dictator. Wow. But People didn't have it. They weren't having it. And he wasn't even elected to the National Assembly. Not only that, but he made some predictions. He predicted that war and hatred would be dead in the 20th century, when we know it was quite the opposite. Okay, that you're man's starting name, to lose her. Okay. That man authored very famous books like The Hatchback of Notre Dame, and Le Deplorables. Victor and, Hugo? And his name was Victor Hugo. So, for the that reason... The only show, whenever, only Bengal show, you get a Victor Hugo analogy. Literally. Yeah, but, but we this still haven't it. really gotten it. I mean... Yes, so this is why whenever someone fails terribly yes. hmm. after everybody predicted them to be successful... Okay. Okay, they say you are victorious. You are the victor. You are like Victor Hugo. You have been Hugo. embarrassed. You thought you were going to be this big success. You were going to be this big dictator. But you ended up a loser. Like Victor Hugo, the 
really world renowned author. Yes. They will be losers <laughs> like him. Exactly. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> we stretched on that one. Yeah, that one's like. That one's as twisted as my small intestine. That's just what Tyler Huntley was enabled to do across the goal line. I'm sorry, guys, exactly. he fell asleep for the past three minutes. Is, is he still talking? Okay. Yes, John. I we think are. we nipped it. And I think, really, John, there's not much else to talk about. Other there, there's than... actually a, there is actually a game going on right now. Oh, that's we right. could end and go watch it. Let's... We could. You could too. Wouldn't you guys so, love to see? Would you guys love to see Burrow versus Brady Super Bowl? Yes, no. and we will. So look. No, I don't want to see. Don't that. forget, you don't John. Tell them what to do. Boring. Yeah, Brady's kind of become a little boring. But John, but I don't. But who else is there? Who in the NFC excites you, Bridget? That's left. I, I want the third times a charm: Niners, Bengals rematch oh that's you what like I the want. old school i do mm. i yeah. like to i feel like that's what this team is about right it's about uh ending streak like losing streaks curses whatever it is so i like a niners bengal super bowl in the desert bengals come out on top that's what i'm going for all right that'd be nice all right so with that john just remember to tell people to subscribe to the show on YouTube's everywhere you get your podcast. What, what should they put in the comments in the YouTube? Put in the comments. Okay, I, if I have you one. think I have one. Yeah. What can the Bengals do to overcome this O line problem? Come on, there's a lot yes. of smart brains. Let's do groups. Yes. Let's do and high don't thinking. Wait, wait. Don't say Andrew. no. Don't say wait words yes. because John's gonna hate you like he hates us. Say something smart, like John, like John would say. That's all we got so long as we device. Bye-bye. Hit it. <laughs>